apologize for something uh, something that happened last week. Uh, we had our Christmas dinner, and we blessed the food before we ended the service, and I think uh, because of that, it kind of got everybody a little bit out of out of cycle, but the acolytes, when, when they come up and, and light the candles, they're representing Christ entering entering our sanctuary, entering our midst. And at the end of the service, as they come up and and relight what they bring up and, and put the candles out and leave, it's to represent the light of uh, the light of Christ left out into the into uh, the world. So when we're doing that, that's why we do that. So no matter what us humans like me mess up, uh, let them let them perform that because that's to represent, like I said, the, the light of Christ going into the world. And, and I apologize for for kind of messing the the sequence up a little bit last week. So, but anyway, today is the third Sunday of Advent. You've heard heard that already, and today is the day where we talk about joy. And for some people, that may be hard to imagine with what's going on in the world. And, and you've already heard our scripture from this morning. Jewel read it to you. She didn't know she was reading the scripture for our message this morning, but she did. It's from Matthew chapter 11 and verses 2 through 11. And when we read it, you may wonder, well, what's that have to do with joy? We talked last week about this and and we're going to talk a little bit about John again this week. So, Matthew chapter 11, verses 2 through 11 says, When John heard in prison what the Messiah was doing, he sent word by his disciples and said to him, Are you the one who is to come, or are we to wait for another? And Jesus answered them, Go and tell John what you hear and see. The blind receive their sight. The lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have good news brought to them. And blessed is anyone who takes no offense at me. As they went away, Jesus began to speak to the crowds about John. What did you go out into the wilderness to look at? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? Someone dressed in soft robes? Look, those who wear soft robes are in royal palaces. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is the one about whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I tell you, among those born of women, no one has arisen greater than John the Baptist. Yet the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. So the word of God for the people of God. So today, like we said, is the third Sunday in Advent. It's, it's traditionally a Sunday that's all about joy. Joy should be our focus today. But you're saying, isn't all of Advent supposed to be a time of joy? Well, it is. It's a time to be joyful and thankful for the fulfillment of the promise of a Savior, a Savior that came to earth, a Savior that's still present and still saving, and a Savior that's going to return. But this particular Sunday, the third Sunday, is, is all about joy. And as such, if you checked out the lectionary readings for this week, all of them have a theme of joy in them somewhere. The Old Testament reading is from the 35th chapter of Isaiah. And in that, the prophet Isaiah writes about how even the desert will rejoice. And it tells us that we need to share the joy we have in the promise of a Savior with those that are struggling. He writes that we're to strengthen the weak hands and to make firm the feeble knees and to say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong. Don't fear. God will come and save you. And in Luke, we have a passage that's typically referred to as Mary's song of praise. 
See, Mary had visited her cousin Elizabeth, and as soon as Elizabeth heard her voice, Elizabeth, Elizabeth is consumed by the Holy Spirit and says, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. Now put yourself in Mary's place in, in that interaction this morning. Surely you have to know Mary needed to hear that, didn't she? Can you imagine how she must have been feeling? I mean, here's Mary, this, this young girl who's engaged to be married. But then she finds out that she's going to have a baby. Thankfully, the man that, that she had agreed to marry, the man that she was supposed to marry, he agrees to still marry her, even though he knows he's not the father of that baby. But all the rumors and the talk and, and the bad looks and the snide remarks, they were always around, weren't they? They'd be around today, wouldn't they? And we're, we're a lot more liberal than things were in Mary's day, aren't we? Mary must have been feeling really low. She must have welcomed and, and jumped at an opportunity to take a trip to visit her cousin because that was away from her hometown. And it was away from all the dirty looks and and the not-so-secret whispers. And what does she hear as soon as she arrives? Blessed are you among women, and, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Suddenly she hears that that same baby inside her, that baby that's been the subject of so much negativity and so much talk, is a blessing to not only her, but also a blessing to the whole world. It gave Mary so much joy that she was able to say things like, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. And surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. And then we have a passage from the fifth chapter of James that, that tells us how we can even find joy in times of suffering. James writes that we're to be patient. We're to be patient in times of suffering like the farmer is patient in waiting for his precious crop from the earth. And he writes that we must strengthen your hearts for the coming of the Lord is near. See, that's where we can find joy in our suffering. The coming of the Lord is near. And I don't mean that just the time that he came that we celebrate this time every year, but he is coming again. And it's getting closer and closer every single day. What joy we will find on that day. And finally, we have our passage for today. The passage about John. That's hard to imagine, isn't it? John finding joy in this passage. Because at the start of the scripture, where's John find himself? He's in prison. We heard earlier about John, how he left in his mother's womb, and we talked last week about John's message to Israel, that they were to repent for the kingdom of heaven was at hand. We also know through scripture that, that it was John who recognized Jesus' true identity when Jesus presented himself to John to be baptized. And that was even confirmed when after the baptism, the voice of the Lord said, This is my beloved Son. But now John, the leaping baby, John, the voice in the wilderness, the, the one that baptized the Savior, has gone straight from preaching to meddling. We know how popular that is, right? It was one thing to stand out in the desert and say, Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand, but, but John took it a step further. He decided to speak critically about the lifestyle of those that are in power. That may be hard for us to imagine because we live in a world where everybody's lives are, are up for discussion and up for scrutiny and, and debate 24 hours a day, but in John's day, that wasn't tolerated. 
In John's day, you didn't talk about the king. And because of that, John found himself in prison. Now, you might be sitting here this morning thinking, okay, preacher, you're losing me a bit. Where's the joy in this? Where's the joy in doing what God told him to do and getting thrown in prison for it? But there is joy in this scripture. Well, see, John sends his disciples to Jesus. And when he sends them, he sends them with a question. He wants them to ask Jesus something. He says, you go find Jesus and you ask him that day down at the River Jordan, was I right? Are you the one or do I have to wait for another? Because see, John knew that he couldn't wait, didn't he? John knew that, that he was on borrowed time. Now see, the Bible doesn't tell us how John received the news when his disciples reported back to him, but can't you imagine what joy must have filled that prison cell? Because see, John was the one that was supposed to prepare the way for the Messiah. And now he could leave this world knowing that the Savior had arrived. We might not know how John received the news. The Bible doesn't tell us that, but, but we do have another story where similar news was received and, and how it was received. Remember the story about Simeon? How he was at the temple one day? The very day that Joseph and Mary brought Jesus to be presented to the Lord. Scripture tells us that Simeon was a righteous and, and a devout man and that he had one thing that he was looking for. See, Simeon had been told by the Holy Spirit that he wouldn't see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. And as soon as he saw Jesus, joy overtook him. As soon as he saw Jesus, he grabbed him and took him in his arms and said, Master, now you're dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation. That's where we find joy in our scripture today. John had prepared the way. He had seen Jesus, and now he fully knew that the Messiah had arrived. See, John's situation was still the same, wasn't it? He was still in prison. If we're to look at the story only from a worldly perspective, there would be no reason for us to find joy. But we're not looking at it from a worldly perspective, are we? We're not worldly people, are we? We're people that's been bought by the blood of the very same Messiah, and we know different. We know there was joy to be found in that scripture. We know that because when we look at John, when we look at John and we think about his mission and his message, hopefully we can see a little bit of ourselves, can't we? What do we have in common with John? Just like John, we're to tell the world that in spite of what you've done, in spite of where you find yourself, in spite of all the bad that you've ever done, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And to share in the promise that we have in that, you must repent. Just like John sometimes we probably feel like that lone voice in the wilderness, don't we? We may not be in prison, but sometimes we probably feel just as isolated, don't we? When we look at our world today and we, we try to witness to people today and, and we try to tell them that the kingdom of heaven is at hand, how's that received in our world today? There was a Gallup poll survey performed last year, 2018. And I found that church membership in our country from 1998 to 2000 was nearly 70%. In 2016 to 2018, church membership had dropped from nearly 70% to 50%. You want to know an even more alarming statistic? The 
so you think, okay, well, a lot of people, they just don't go to church. I mean, they're religious people. They believe in God. They, they just don't feel the, the, the need to go to church, right? That very same survey found that, and those people surveyed, they also tracked how many of those people had absolutely zero religious affiliation. In 98, 2000, only 8% of our country admitted that they had zero religious affiliation. But in 2016 to 2018, that had more than doubled to 19%. So yeah, sometimes we feel alone, don't we? Sometimes we feel isolated. But also, like John this morning, in spite of that information, we can find joy. We can find joy because just like John, we also know beyond any doubt that the Lord's Messiah, the one who was promised all the way back when Adam and Eve took that first bite of the fruit, and the one that was prophesied all through the Old Testament, that Messiah has arrived. He was born in a stable to a young girl named Mary. And with that birth, we have access to joy like nobody ever thought imaginable. And even though a part of this season is to remember and, and to celebrate that birth and the hope and the joy that we can find in that birth, this season is also to remind us that we, as those called by Him, are still preparing the way for His return. Amen? See, today is a day about hope. If we place our trust in Him, no matter where we find ourselves, no matter what our present situation looks like, we have hope. Where do we have hope? It's found in the belief and the knowledge that one day, sooner now than ever before, Jesus will return. And this time, when He comes... He's not coming as a small baby in a, a manger in a stable, is he? This time he's coming as a king. And he's coming to call his people home. Now, I can't think of a better way for us to realize the hope that we have than to celebrate. We have a reason to celebrate, don't we? Imagine what a witness and what a testimony that would be to the world when the world looks at you and they know what's going on, and you're able to celebrate. We have a reason to celebrate today. You know why? Today we have two people who have decided to break the trend that we talked about in that Gallup poll. They've decided to break that trend and present themselves just like Jesus did down at the Jordan River and to make it clear to the whole world that they have more than just a religious affiliation. That they have a personal relationship with an almighty God. And it's in Him that they place their trust. And they're going to go further than that. They're going to place their membership in a local church. This church where they can live and grow and work and hurt and praise God with a whole bunch of people in one mind and one accord. But before we get started with that, we have to focus on our mission, our calling to prepare the way for Jesus' return. Uh, today, if all you know about Jesus is that he was that baby that was born in a manger. If to you, Jesus is still only the Messiah that was promised, but that's it, you have an opportunity to make him more than that today. Because today he wants to be more than that. Today he wants to be your personal Savior. The message that, God, that John gave all those years ago is still relevant today. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. 
you have the opportunity to experience the joy that only Jesus can provide. See, today, you can be filled like John was with the joy that allows you to face whatever may come because you know that the Savior, not just any Savior, not just Jimmy's Savior or Paul David's Savior, but your Savior, He's arrived. And He's there with His arms open wide, ready to save you. Will you receive that joy this morning? Turn your hymnals to page three or three sixty seven. Three sixty seven. And you know, at first glance it doesn't look like he touched me. It goes with his senses, but what greater source of joy than to receive a touch from the Lord? And that's what we're about this morning. And if you're here and you don't claim him as your savior, I can't think of a better morning to do just that. So let's all stand and sing. Eric's going to lead us.